What's up, boys? Winter Cup Day 52. Today, we are pretty much just chilling again. I mean, most of the week is comprised of rest days, which is a good thing in my opinion. I think it. any any real bodybuilder will tell you that it, whenever you're training to failure consistently and you are just getting in a lot of intensity in the gym, you need to have adequate rest time, right? Not just between your sets, but also, uh, you know, in life, you need to be resting, you need to be sleeping a lot. So, I mean, you would hear about, uh, I'm pretty sure Miss, uh, Mr. Olympia Dorian Yates, he would uh, train much less frequently than the average Mr. Olympia at that time, because you would see a lot of bodybuilders who would train for hours in the gym, who would be in the gym, like Arnold was there twice a day, multiple hours a day, and I think, you know, honestly, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things that probably worked for him because he had just great genetics, right? And I know that that might seem like a cop-out to an actual explanation, but it's true, right? Some guys can get genuinely great development even if their training principles are screwed up as long as they train even remotely close to failure, right? So, you know, with that said, I think Arnold oftentimes would give people bad advice and he would he would, he would just try to mess with people, right? So I, I think, um, <laughs> I, I heard Lee Priest talking about how Arnold was just screwed with people whenever he had people doing the Arnold press, you know, when you twist the dumbbells out. He said it didn't make any sense. He, and he was just talking about that. I'm like, you know what? It doesn't seem right now that I think about it. I've never seen somebody like really serious about their training doing the Arnold press. It just seems kind of weird. But um, I don't know. I'm sure there's people who've done it. But still, though, all that to say, training principles are dialed in and rest time is dialed in. So now I can pretty much just throw all my available energy at these sessions. And uh, I actually think my split is better than I even thought it was because I'm getting a day of rest between leg day and back day. So what I think I might start implementing is some variation of uh, like lower back type work or just like spinal erector work. And... Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I was using this uh, one machine that felt interesting, but I don't know. Who, who knows, boys? But when, when it comes to, uh, you know, any sort of back extension, you kind of got to find one that just feels right for you because most of them feel kind of weird. But, um, yeah, coffee is brewed. Creatine is going to be made. I'm thinking, boys, um, I have no idea what's for dinner, so I think I'm going to go easy on the breakfast today, probably just have, um, I don't know, I might even just skip breakfast today and have a protein shake instead, who knows. I've been noticing lately that pretty much most of my videos at LA Fitness get a lot more views than my videos at the boxing gym. And I actually wonder why, because most of the time, in my opinion, my thumbnails for the boxing gym are, I don't know, maybe better? But who even knows? Because I know thumbnails are a very minimal part to play in terms of how many views you get. But, uh, yeah, like my chest day was getting over 500 views. My freaking leg day was getting over 500. We're doing well. We're doing well. So, I had quite a fear of losing a muscle to the point where I was genuinely thinking about stopping the cut because I, I looked at myself and I had kind of like a body dysmorphia effect. I was looking and I'm like, dude, I look, I look smaller and this and that. Well, dude, I took my measurements and, uh. I was surprised to find out my waist got smaller. Uh, my left arm got a little bigger. Now it's the same as my right, which makes sense because I've been starting with my left. Uh, my calves got bigger. My 
thighs both got a good amount smaller and forearms got a little bit bigger so with that said boys um extremely surprised plus i mean my bust even is about the same it's like 41 and a half so definitely grew a little bit which is weird because i've been hyper restricting my calories but i think the gains that i have gotten are mainly from the time leading up to that before i hyper restricted my calories and uh also i would credit that's a creatine a little bit because I mean, there's no wonder that if you have more intramuscular water that your measurements might slightly improve. So definitely something to be noted. And another reason why I will not be stopping the cut anytime soon, no stopping the cut anytime soon. So we're, we're thinking at least another five pounds. Um, if not, maybe even another 10. I think by that point, that'll be a very good stopping point. And then uh, we will just commence on the mega bulk, but it'll be slow, right? Everybody's saying, oh, you should do it slow. You don't have to tell me twice, man. I want to do it slow regardless. So definitely something I want to do. I think that, uh, again, the principle of reaching new heights applies, right? If you bulk to the same weight every time you bulk, I just feel like you're not going to make the same gains you would as if you reached a new weight. Maybe that is just BS, and I'm saying it so that way I can eat more. But the reality is, I'm thinking that this theory is pretty sound. I've never seen somebody do a bulk where they reach a higher weight than they previously were, and end up cutting down for it not to be successful. Every time I see somebody bulk and it's successful in the end and of their cut and everything and they've put on size and strength that they've retained, by the way, through the cut, then that tells me one thing. Reaching new heights is important, especially if you're natural. Now, I am of the opinion that... Uh, I've been 186 before. That's fact. I was probably around the low 20s in terms of uh, body fat percentage. And, uh, you know, that was a pretty high weight, right? And I definitely did not look my best, but I also thought about this. It, let's say creatine gives me six pounds of intramuscular water, okay? That would put me up to my previous bulk being 192. And let's say I gain five pounds of muscle on this next bulk, okay? Which seems to be the track that I'm on because I am experiencing pretty much newbie gains at this point. Five pounds of muscle. That would put me up to 197. And at that point, I would just pull the trigger and hit 200 just for fun. And it would probably net me more gains. So we'll see how I feel, right? Maybe I'll get to 190 and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I feel weird. This is just stupid. But I'll probably push a little harder. And um, I think that after this next bulk, the next cut is going to be even more ridiculous. And I'm going to be like shredded at 150 which would be really cool to see. So anyway, just a little talk about my goals, I guess, and different things, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, I will see you tomorrow.